Um, we really want to just aim at making the syncing of secrets more seamlessly from Vault, right? Having Vault become the centralized service. So why are you here today? Um, the, the whole point of this session is really for you to understand, you know, what is the reasoning behind it? Why do we have even this, this whole uh, feature available to you guys, right? Um, Secret Sync is currently still in beta, but soon we'll move off of beta to GA. And so it's really about, you know, because understand, uh, answering the question of why, okay, when I have, you know, let's say I have, oh, I'm already using a zero key vault, or I'm using AWS Secrets Manager, or even Google Secrets Manager. Like, why would I want to use Vault, right? So today, this is the session for you to understand that. But first, let's understand what is the secret lifecycle, you know, management, the typical way, right? This, this is how we look at secrets being managed, right? First, we are in the unmanaged phase where only the teams operating said secrets are the ones that understand, you know, they, they have knowledge of the credentials and they know how to use them and where they are. But there's also another side of an unmanaged secret where, you know, we kind of don't know anything about where the secret is, who is using it and when they are using it, right? So that's one side. Then, you know, if you have not been reached out to by any of the account team, um, then you might not have heard this, but, you know, generally, if we identify that our customers don't have managed secrets, then we'll say, hey, you know, why not look at Vault, right? Vault can be that centralized service. The first phase is to move them, them off of being unmanaged to being managed. And we start off by at least putting them in a centralized service like Vault. So these credentials become static credentials. But at least when they are involved, we understand that, you know, we know where they are, we have visibility into it, and we can also audit the usage of those secrets. Subsequently, when you are very familiar with Vault already, then we will say, hey, you know, we have, you know, database secret engines, we have, you know, IAM credential secret engines. Why not think about rotating them? Right. The whole point of rotation is so that at least it's automated. You as a human operator do not need to figure out, okay, you know, um, what how am I going to plan the rotation? Um, you know, Vault can actually automatically do it for us and you know, periodically renew those secrets. So, you know, you can because it's automated, you can even zoom them down to like one hour, you know, a secret to live for one hour and then you know, we rotate them again. So this increases your overall um, posture of, you know, your, your secrets. And then moving on, the last part is making it extremely dynamic, right? It's fully automated. The, even the entire creation, the renewal, the deprecation of those secrets can be fully managed by fault itself and no human interaction is required. So that has been this whole, you know, topic you know, where we go to our customers and talk to Vault about. But then we realize, right, this is, you know, what, what would happen. You would have all your different credentials in your CSPs, you have database credentials, you have AD credentials. And then we'll say, hey, why don't the application teams integrate directly with Vault? Or if they do not want to integrate directly with Vault, we do have other kinds of ways like the Vault agent, or even the Kubernetes Secrets Operator. Um, so Kubernetes Secrets Operator is one of the latest capabilities that has been added to ease the secrets being you know, uh, managed within the Kubernetes environment. But today, that's not the topic. But anyway, so this has been a way, right? Where we say, where we insert Vault in. And generally, I would, I would be very upfront with my customers and say like, you know, this is kind of revolutionary in a way where we will definitely cause some disruption to your environment. And when this, you know, is being said, of course, you know, certain customers, they get a bit scared, right? They don't want to disrupt. They don't want their, you know, production workloads to go down, things like that, right? And then they'll say they're not ready. So we understand that there is, you know, we know that there's a problem with centralizing of secrets. But then we also acknowledge that there is, you know, some customers that might not be so ready to make this shift, but they eventually want to, 
right? So how can we make that their lives easier? This is where we introduce Secret Sync, right? So we still maintain, we still give you the capabilities of Vault being that centralized service. Vault becomes that, you know, it manages the entire secret inventory. If you do not want applications to integrate directly with Vault through the agent, the CLI, the Kubernetes operator, etc., and you are already using existing secret managers, this is where you can actually still leverage Vault to sync your secrets in to those secret managers, the cloud native secret managers. So what does this mean? We still maintain Vault as a centralized service. We are able to rotate our secrets automatically. And because we know the usage of our secrets, we are able to provide reports. We are already, you know, it's all part of the audit trail. Eventually we'll be able to, you know, we'll definitely want to think about how can we value, you know, value edit further by, you know, using the dynamic secret engine registry, right? And then we also release the HCP Vault Radar, which allows us to do some secret scanning as well. So because now everything becomes centralized in Vault, this is where we are able to do all these kind of cool things. So again, to reiterate the value of Secret Sync, right? Firstly, is to improve your overall resilience. Because even if Vault goes down, this, this is really one of the big questions, right? I get from many customers today that, hey, what if my Vault goes down, right? Then I can't access my secrets. What's going to happen to my application? Then, you know, with this way, not to worry because we actually sync your secrets already to those secret managers, right? Um, and, you know, your applications can still access at least the last known version of the secret. But that being said, Vault is also built to be extremely resilient. That's why with our, you know, our hash code validated designs, you will notice that we will always advocate for you to have a DR in place so that in the event Vault really does go down, your main cluster, we can swing over to a secondary. Secondly, we have, you know, we want to increase the overall or make the developers happy, right? We need to increase their experience. Um, and we know that developers, most of the time, they do prefer the native cloud secret manager, right? Because it's it's user-friendly, it's, you know, already integrated into their applications. They don't really want to change, you know, everybody's so resistant to change. And so that's why we want to keep both sides happy. We want to keep the security team happy. We want to keep the developers happy. And this is the way to do so. Thirdly, secret redaction, right? Most pipeline tools will, you know, redact all those secrets from the UI and the logs whenever they reference a native secret object, right? So we will be able to redact those secrets. Fourthly, manage your cloud service limitation, right? Certain um, cloud native services like your key vault, your secret manager, they kind of like do one thing only, but at least with vault, right? We expand out that thing to beyond secret management. You know, vault itself can do encryption as a service, advanced data protection, you can manage your PKI certificates or even, you know, uh, integrate with your KMS tools. Lastly, compliance. We want to address compliance. And how do we do that is at least having Vault as a centralized service, we are able to maintain visibility, auditability and control into the usage of those secrets. And so to give you more, you know, put it in, you know, a slight format on the details of this capability, right? The currently it's a one-way sync, right? From Vault to the supported destination. Um, we only replicate the KVV2 secret engine. So that is our static secret engine version two. It's asynchronous and it's event-based replication. If the secret is deleted in Vault, which you will see later in the demo. It is also deleted in the secret destination. The syncing of those secrets may take, you know, at least one to three seconds, which you will also see later. And currently, these are our supported destinations, right? From AWS, Azure, GCP, GitHub, as well as Verso. Then in terms of the future sync details, right? Um, you know, we really want to aim at, I mean, these are future capabilities that 
from my perspective, I hope that we can do do that, right? This a disclaimer, this is not a committed roadmap. It's just taking that whole idea from Paul Vault, right? And putting into sequencing details, um, into the secret sync capability. So drift detection and remediation, right? Do when we notice that hey, somebody has made a change in our secret manager, you know, we want to be able to see that. You know, what about dynamic secrets? We want to be able to support the rotation, the automatic rotation of those secrets. And then syncing from the secret destinations to fall, right? Because again, you would have so many secrets already in those destinations and you want to be able to sync them in vault so that you don't need to do like a two-time effort thing. Um, and then of course you have your bring your own keys and also automatic root credential rotation. So again, disclaimer, this is not a committed roadmap. All right, so eventually what can you, what you can kind of expect from, you know, secret sync, right? Is that, you can adopt this kind of phase approach where at first you would have um, Vault integrating with your secret manager and your applications talking to the secret manager. And then eventually when you, you know, we give you time to move off of it and then you can adopt Vault as that primary secret manager. So the pros are stated here, right? Where we are able to leverage Vault as a governing body. We are able to reduce total costs. Um, we can easily, you know, have the time to plan that migration strategy and you know you can expand to those advanced use cases. All right. So without further ado, let's go in quickly into the demo. What you what you can expect is a super simple demo, which you can do yourself as well. Um, this demo has been created by my teammate called Johnny, right? Uh, he covers the government sector in Singapore, and he has kindly created you know a a Jupyter notebook, right, that showcases this demo itself. So you will have Vault that has a secret stored. I've already got most of the components up already. So I have Vault Enterprise up. It's my secret stock. Um, then I'm going to sync it to my different destinations. And of course, with different def destinations, there are certain configurations that need to be done. Uh, I won't be covering that in this session, but you will be able to get those information when you, when you access this link above. All right, so I am going to change my screen. I hope you can see the full screen. Um, I do think yeah, so. We see, yes, we see your CLI and also the browser cool. screen. Thanks, Eric. Okay, so again, this whole entire notebook is set up in a way that you can execute it yourself as well. You see the same demo um, workflow, right? So I'm just going to skip all this. Um, I already have Vault running. Um, and then I'm going to set up this. Uh, we are going to have this secret in Vault, right? So as of now, you know, what, what we can see is that I'm going to enable those, that, that KVV2 stock. So, oh yes, apologies for that. I've already enabled it. So from the vault perspective, I've already created the, everything related to vault. So let's skip all this. Um, but let's go straight into syncing our secrets with the secret manager, right? So you will not have doormat, right? Doormat is an internal tool that we use to, um, link all our, you know, credentials from all different clouds. So, but first, you know, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to refresh my doormat credentials. Right. Okay. So I've refreshed my doormat credentials. It's going to last me for a certain amount of time. And then next, I'm going to point the AWS region to AP Southeast. So it's a Singapore one. And this is the configuration that is needed. Zoom in a bit. I think it might be a bit small. Um, so this is the configuration that's needed for those sync settings. So we're going to put the access key ID, the secret access key, my session token, as well as my region. So I've indicated that this is my destination. So yes, this has been done, right? And then we already know where the KVB2 path is, the secret name is, and then I'm going to write it in, right? And then we see over here, um, this uh, this is my value, right? This is my destination that I'm mounting on. This is the value of the secret that has been created. When you start off, it will definitely be version one, but I've been doing this demo, running it, ensuring that it doesn't fail on me. So that's why my version is number four now. And then you will see you have the user ID and the password, right? And this has been automatically generated by four. So, 
let me run through everything first and then I'll go into the various secret manager, right? To show you that it does propagate down to those, right? So when you go into the Azure key vault section, then these are the requirements that you need to do before you can execute the actual setup, right? So I need to export all these, which I've already done. So um, then when you echo it, it's the same, right? It's all about configuring that secret destination, which is now Azure. So again, different secret engines will require different information. And what you see is already here. Next, you configure the sync to the secret path. So the same thing again, it's the same secret, right? From Vault, from AWS, let's see, NKV. If you go up, it's also NKV, right? It's the same username and password. And then next, from a Google Platform perspective, we are going to, so these are credentials that I've already created in a JSON file. So I'm just going to hit play. And my connection details are there. The same thing, configuring the GCP destination. This is taking a bit longer. Okay, but the same thing appears. So now, we're going to refresh. Hopefully, it has time to propagate down. Okay, AWS has time to propagate down. GCP may not have, uh, but let me just go in. All right. So as you can see, both all three of them was empty just now. But now after a refresh, you know, we can actually see that there is a secret that has been automatically created by Vault, right? The labels are Vault, it's Google Manage, it's automatically replicated. And if you go in, so taking the Google Secret Managing uh, as an example, right? I want to view the secret value. You can see this is the exact same password and user ID that has been propagated down by Vault itself. And the same goes for this site for the AWS Secret Manager. You can retrieve the secret value, it's the same thing. And then just one more step of the demo, just want to show you the rotation and the syncing in action, right? So we're going to update that key, that mount, and we're going to have a version five of the secret, and this is the new password and the user ID. So just giving it a couple of seconds, we are going to change this. Okay, let's see. And yes, we have already propagated it down to AWS Secret Manager. Right. And then let me refresh this Google engine. And we see that we have now version two of the secret. So if we view it, it's also here. And lastly, I didn't show you Azure just now. So let us just go and do that, do a refresh on that. And so now you see we have two versions. You have the older one and the current one. So you go in, you show the secret value, it's exactly if you cannot see it, it is exactly as what we have over on this side of the notebook. Right, so this is a really quick demo um, of Secret Sync in action, right? Just want to thank you again for your time.